要还是他们脱离的那种态度。嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯、Recording in progress. 
We have a Cittaslo tourist project from Belluno Cittaslo with the councillor Yuki De Miglia. And uh, uh, not at last, Filippo Pighetti introducing, introducing another key uh, point of our meeting today, the outdoor activities, specifically outdoor bike from Chiavenna Cittaslo, Italy. Thanks. Uh, to all for your commitment and your time. And so we start with the uh, marching is okay. Marching, marching Galibarski, Director of Touring and Sport Department from Varmia Missouri region. Uh, he, the speech is building common tourist products around the Cittaslo cities in Varmia and Missouri. Please marching, welcome. Welcome. We have Hello. a little uh, technical problem, but uh, everything now is okay. Mm, I start uh, my presentation. Dear members, uh, I would like to thanks for a uh, great honor and opportunity to uh, um, make a speak today. Uh, it's uh, really for us, for uh, uh, our uh, region, great honor to be in Cita Slow and uh, work with you. Um, I will present uh, uh, my speech in uh, national language, and Mr. Lukas will translate this part, uh, main part of my uh, presentation. So I will start uh, in Polish language. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen. As uh, the Varmia and Mazuria region, we are very much renowned in Poland for our connection to the Czechoslovak idea. And uh, needless to say, the very idea of Czechoslovak has been accommodated well in our voivodeship in our region. It is widely known, widely recognized by our inhabitants, and so it is also widely implemented by our local authorities. And this is also underpinned with very interesting projects and that we are running jointly with the European Union. Thanks to this uh, fruitful cooperation with the international Chitoslo network, good practices that we keep putting in place and the very activity and the spirit of our residents, uh, we can we can implement the idea of Chitoslo in very interesting manners. The very specificity of our region, be it its agricultural character, be it a very touristic region uh, with a very uh, interesting medieval uh, traditions uh, has made it possible for Chitoslo uh, to be adopted so easily and so smoothly. And this is also the reason why the Chitoslo ideas has been, has been assumed with that much enthusiasm in our region. Due to the historic underpinnings of our region. And despite this uh, rich history, in the past, we would have to be struggling uh, with ruins in our historical tissue following the Second World War. And therefore, the Polish Cittaslo, when drawing to the EU funds, focused on the rebuilding and revitalization of the urban tissue. And this process is going to be continued in the years to come. And this process is the reason why we are, uh, we are um, now uh, embellishing our, our cities, making them ever more beautiful. We are also prepared to be able to propose a tourist product entitled Polish Cittaslo Towns. Let me just tell you quite frankly in the beginning that this process is far from easy. Our region is uh, very much a magnet for tourists in Poland and it does have a lot, a whole variety of touristic products, something that is very much connected to nature. And this is for granted, uh, be it our lakes, be it our forests. And uh, there was one competition for seven um, natural wonders, and our region was one in the, was one shortlisted as uh, one of the winners. We are located at the borderline 
at the eastern borderline of the European Union in the peripheries, at the margins. Uh, we have uh, many forests, and this is the kind of image that uh, we are not going to, uh, to, be, to, to act against, because this serves as a market to us. On the one hand, but on the other hand, aside from these natural resources, we also have touristic routes, uh, well-established touristic routes, be it a medieval castle touristic route, or Elbung Canal. This is a unique uh, application whereby uh, boats can float on the grass, not on water. And this is due to the fact that there is a system of infrastructure which makes it possible for, uh, for boats. Uh, and there is also green velo bike lane, 2,000 kilometers of bike lanes along uh, the Polish border. Uh, and um, hence, it is uh, very difficult to uh, for grant the idea of Czechoslaw in the overall touristic offer of the Varmia and Mazuria region. As I said beforehand, in Varmia and Mazuria, we very much focus in the first place on the revitalization of towns. But now we need to refocus a bit on to the, uh, the, the actual production of a touristic product. And this process uh, was uh, started 20 years ago. The trailblazer was Mr. Stanislav Harajda. And unfortunately, he's not with us. Uh, he's, he he uh, got sick. COVID and he's no longer with us, unfortunately, uh, but there is much heritage that he has left in the context of Czechoslaw and Czechoslaw touristic routes. And this is the kind of heritage that uh, we are very much wishing to uh, to foster in the future, as Dan Stanislaw was the member of our scientific committee. We would like to pursue this path, and there are many conceptual works ongoing on the touristic product or touristic routes that might be associated uh, with a cheetah slow. We have adopted unanimously the concept by Stanislav Harajda to concentrate on the already existing touristic routes that uh, connect the subsequent cheetah slow, plus the route of medieval castle, plus the route for uh, canoeing, these routes already connect the cheetah slow. And based on that, and based on uh, the attempt to create some new touristic networks, touristic routes, but because not all the cities are not already connected, we could propose something to our cheetah slow that may be a foundation for this overall tourist uh, product. Ladies and gentlemen, there is much ahead of us, and this year, during some workshops in the Chitaslo towns, uh, we'll be will be attempting to, to focus on our uh, on our uh, advantages, on our benefits, on our uh, strong points, so that we can do and achieve a lot together with the subsequent Chitaslo towns. We would like to reinforce the connections already existent in between the subsequent Chitaslo, and this allows us to. Um, bring forth a comprehensive uh, tourist product in the years to come. Of course, within the framework of this uh, tourism and promotion and product development, uh, we have uh, much progress that we've already made. Year by year, we keep updating our touristic brochures regarding to the slow. We've got multimedia in place and we want our to the slow weeks to be rich in events. That is one central event, that is uh, this uh, Chedislo festival. And now what we are lacking is this strong reinforcement of connections between the Chedislo towns and the creation just one comprehensive holistic product that will be well embedded in the awareness of our native and foreign visitors. We want to successfully disseminate the very existence of uh, 
network of small towns in Varmia and Missouri, which take pride in being members of the Judicial International Network. Ladies and gentlemen, this presentation is a prelude to what we are going to undertake in the future. On our part, we are very much aware of the fact that the touristic products in the uh, touristic regions uh, is a very hard avenue to pursue. This is far from easy, as I said beforehand. This is probably the case in Italy too. If a given region uh, produces a very strong associations with, with a given set of products, it's very hard to withdraw from it. And this is um, by no means a, our intention to withdraw what, from what we already have. We want to surmount it with adding up to it and the touristic values that uh, we hold very dear. Thank you very much indeed for your attention. Thank you for listening. And I'm immensely delighted that uh, we can be talking uh, together during this academia, during this academy. Tomorrow we are going to celebrate um, at the meeting of the Chilislo uh, Network, and uh, this is uh, going to be yet another occasion to highlight the importance of the Chilislo Network in all our towns. Thank you for this. So much, uh, Marcin. We well know you very good. We know you say uh, it is not so easy to compose the, and sell uh, touristic Chita Slow packages, but of course, but you have a, a very exciting uh, and uh, that you are winning in Poland challenge. It's a challenge that you are win winning now because you are in the same time to uh, revitalize your network of cities of towns and in the same time to build new package and proposal uh, offers uh, for uh, cheetah slow and slow tourism it's not easy but it is possible thank you so much for your commitment and so we go to the second uh, speakers from uh, the cheetah slow of asolo italy we have two uh, contribution from Asolo. The first one is by the director, artistic director of Festival of Viaggiatore, Traveler Festival. And the other is uh, by Chiara Carinato, the culture office of Asolo. Please, Emanuela Cananzi. Buongiorno a tutti. Uh, io sono appunto Emanuela Cananzi, sono un operatore turistico culturale. Mi occupo da molti anni di organizzazione di eventi nell'arte, nell'editoria e, e nel uh, turismo. Diciamo che sono tutti eventi che vedono una sinergia tra diversi ambienti e diversi interlocutori. Il Festival del Viaggiatore ne prevede uno molto importante che è il territorio. Ma eh, vi ho preparato un brevissimo video per darvi un assaggio di quello che è appunto il Festival del Viaggiatore in Asolo. culture. Come with us. the territory Ecco qua, eh, l'ultima frase era vivi il tuo territorio. The last sentence was live your territory. With this festival we have started from here with the desire to 
promotes our territory, namely a mix of landscape, culture, beauty, and many creative and recreative activities. The festival, the Travelers Festival, was realized in 2015. The festival wanted to express the territory, the village, as Asolo, which is one of the most international that are in the world, that are present in the world. The Travelers Festival What is it? It's an event based on tourism and culture dedicated to travel in a metaphoric way. Travel as a metaphor for life, which is a tale of experiences, of stories. And it's an idea to create meeting places that can tell the magic places that this village offers. It's a festival that it's not dedicated to a specific uh, topic such as literature, but it's a transversal festival. By using the vocabulary of travelers, we create specific thematic directions. We invite our guests to tell their own point of view. So the guests are writers, scientists, archaeologists. They are attracted to the territory and they have to tell their point of view. The protagonist is not only the guest, but above all, the places. We try to open the places, especially those that cannot usually be visited. Asolo is full of magic places that hide centuries of history, important places. Asolo is the place of Eleonora Duse, for example. And is the village of Freya Star, which is, who is one of the most important writers of all times. Through the festival, we want to amplify this tale and this story. During these days dedicated to travelers, because we are all travelers, both who tell the stories and who listen to them, we create small places that are usually not accessible. We open Casa Manipiero, the covent, the Freya house. Our guests and our hosts welcome the public in these beautiful places. So the public can do a travel within the travel the tourist and traveler has the possibility to discover and rediscover places, taste local products, listen to authentic proposals of culture, leave the festival. What does it mean? One of the missions of the Travelers Festival is to leave the places to tell them and during these days, the travelers can live together these places by making immersive experiences, because the most important thing is to go back home with an emotion. This emotion will urge you to invite and live this experience.
the Travelers Festival is a generative uh, festival and started a new way of organizing events. The Travelers Festival promotes the territory both internally and externally. What does it mean? It means that promoting a territory is possible, especially through the fact that those who live within knows know what, what the territory has to offer. They must know the places in order to tell them. The best promoters of the territory are the inhabitants. And this is the first public of the festival. Then there are there's the public who comes from the outside. The public of the Travelers Festival is a public of travelers that come from all the entire north of Italy. We are followed on the social media by many followers that come from many places in Europe. I already underlined some characteristics, one of which is a the fact of that it is a local festival. We have many small pearls, small jewels, small characteristics that even the, if they represent specific characteristics, they express a global aspect, which is much more wide. The small and big aspects intertwine, and this is what we want to propose. This is a slow festival. I remember that one of the travelers that uh, coined this term, Asolare, this term represents the festival and we have realized that traveling is very important. Isolare means to stroll and breathing the territory, what the territory has to offer very slowly. What are the aims? Enhancing the places rediscover values, talents, and vocations of a territory, namely because creativity is not linked only to the art world or to a landscape. Azolo is the city of 100 horizons that are very beautiful and very different from each other. Creativity is also entrepreneurship, artisanship, and we are rich in these realities that we export in the world. These are excellences. So the desire of the Travelers uh, Festival is to transmit and convey an Italy that is creative, vital. It has Italy as everything in order to live with what it has with tourism. The aim and the mission of the Travelers Festival is to create a network of places, a network among various representatives with the same objectives and create synergic events. Just in, only in this way we can reach concrete aims. And then we want to meet the need of experiences that are outside the web. After all what we have experienced, we need to go out to make outdoor experiences. We have to thank this communication means, but the desire of human contact 
of watch the other persons in the eyes is fundamental. And if we succeed in creating such occasions that allow you to live what surrounds us through all senses, then we can provide important experiences to the tourists. Starting from last year, the festival started to travel small steps outside Azolo because it has this mission, namely to tell the territories through art and culture. And this uh, year we will have an itinerary through three provinces, Venice, Treviso and Vicenza. It will stop in Maser, in La Villa Palladiana. It will stop in Bassano, Bassano del Grappa, Possagno, Mussolente. In order to amplify these objectives, we have thought of structuring the festival as a broader project so that we can let the territories speak out not only when the festival is organized in presence but also through a tv channel dedicated to the stories of the territories we try to provide contents such as documentaries, small focuses on entrepreneurship. We want to tell the itineraries, the routes that are available. This is a project that has a strong identity, but it is continuously changing. It is open to new synergies and collaborations. I remember that last year, the Travelers Festival has been awarded with an important award by Europe, but together with other two foreign festivals, as a model of good practices for the characteristics that I told you before. The reasons for this award are the enhancement of the identity and cultural aspects of a touristic destination. It supports a quality tourism and not a quantity tourism. It allows to know places that are not usually open to the public. And it is a very good example of innovation, especially during the COVID emergency. Last year, we have had the sponsorship by Parma Capital of Culture 2021. We have been the object of study from the Progetto Electro Festival. And we have been a case history for the RCS Academy. Academy. I want to thank you for this opportunity of foretelling the Travelers Festival. Thank you. Thank you, Emanuela Cananzi. Very, very interesting. It is an excellence in the proposal of the slow culture and slow tourism. Thank you. From Asolo, another uh, contribution by Chiara Carinato about the traces of the First World War in Asolo, but it is a way to rediscover your territory and the commons in the old path in the hills. Please, Chiara Carinato. Grazie, buongiorno. Sono Chiara. Thank you and good morning. I'm Chiara, responsible of the cultural office of the city of uh, Asolo. My um, intervention will be about the history um, of Asolo uh, during the war. Some of the images that I um, will show um, are uh, of the 20s. Uh, and are from military, private, and public archives. The, 
the first uh, world uh, war has uh, uh, seen Italy and uh, our region uh, uh, involved uh, in the first line. We have at the most dramatic events of the big war and has they have involved soldiers not only from Italy but also from all over Europe Soldiers coming from uh, uh, many European countries. Um, I need to share my screen again. On the mountains of uh, uh, the um, uh, Veneto region, there is a landscape that is uh, deeply marked by the war events. Uh, you can see here a photo of French soldiers that are going through the center of uh, Asolo. On the hills uh, of uh, Verona to the highlands uh, of uh, Vicenza and the pre uh, Alps of uh, Veneto and uh, uh, the Piave River. The memory of the history is still uh, uh, alive. We have many trails um, of um, um, fortresses, uh, pillboxes, and uh, uh, objects that have been uh, retrieved on the hills. We do not have just material uh, uh, trails, but um, in the uh, places of the Great War, we had uh, side by side soldiers that have experienced pain um, uh, and uh, 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 that were uh, men of every um, uh, social origin and um, they have experienced the same feeling. Also, the soldier of the um, uh, enemy on the front of the big war from 1915 to 1918. Among the uh, popular masses uh, was born uh, the idea of uh, national identity. During the war, we had a lot of um, stories uh, and memories uh, regarding the war and regarding the places. All of those uh, memories and uh, uh, works that are linked to the war represent a cultural artistic uh, heritage, not just of the inhabitants of our region, but for the entire uh, humankind. And this has to be preserved and uh, transmitted to the future generations. This awareness uh, has led us to uh, make an historical research in these uh, uh, places of the Great War in Asolo. The first place that we have um, acknowledged and uh, enhanced is the uh, hill of San Martin. This is the highest hill of Asolo that has uh, always um, had a strategic role. Same uh, Napoleone Bonaparte was there to observe the movement of the Austrian troops on the Piave River. On this hill, we have an, uh, 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 a point where some, uh, um, a point that had uh, an anti-craft aircraft uh, uh, function. On the uh, hill of St. Martin, we uh, also had a hill uh, made of uh, sandstone and we had um, uh, a path that went 
through the entire hill. We also had uh, a point that was part of a system of cableways that linked the hill to other parts. The idea of the recovery or retrieval regarded also the other uh, hill uh, that uh, had a strategic, uh, was a strategic place for various reasons. It has uh, a difference in height uh, compared to the higher place. Uh, uh, and this is signed, uh, marked by the other river. And then because it uh, overlooks uh, a crossroad that were built by the corps of engineers in 1918. The check of the communication ways that allow the passage of the troops uh, from uh, the uh, plain to uh, the mountain was uh, strategic. And this is why on the hill, you can find trails of uh, Tr uh, trenches uh, and parts uh, and from there the defense line should start in case of breaking through of the enemy troops this uh, didn't happen as we know but we ha still have a lot of trails and galleries uh, um, uh, and we have uh, also uh, retrieved them another symbolic uh, place is uh, the park of the remembrance um, this is uh, um, a postcard um, this was created um, uh, according to the decision of the superintendents and was uh, uh, aimed at all of the uh, uh, responsibles for the education. Adesso. Le vedete? Can you see now? foto diciamo in bianco nero iniziale sì 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 oh, allora sì. un secondo eh, se mi segue condivido lo schermo aspetta che devo uscire sì lo vediamo ecco adesso perfetto grazie adesso vediamo l'intera sì grazie sì, io però non riesco ad andare avanti questo è il problema the problem is that I cannot go uh, go on from there. Okay, va bene? Sì, 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 perfetto, perfetto. Okay, okay. Allora, How it works. So this is, uh, those are the photos that I was, uh, was trying to show before. And the uh, park of the remembrance as it was uh, in a postcard of the 30s, uh, this is the park as it is today. This was um, um, opened uh, uh, in 1923. We had uh, planted um, more than 100 cypresses uh, in this uh, uh, place. And the um, place uh, that was chosen uh, had a symbolic uh, value because it's next to the uh, primary school. And from there, you can see on the uh, background uh, Mount Tumba that is uh, the symbol of the sacrifice of soldiers during the First uh, World War. Then we had the trails of uh, the, um, uh, the, the war in the uh, civic tower that hosted uh, until 1918 French and Italian soldiers. Those uh, 
soldiers left uh, many graffiti on uh, uh, the um, walls of the tower made with the pencils and uh, charcoal pencil. Uh, we know that they were French because we found some French um, uh, uh, words. Um, those uh, graffiti are um, sus, um, uh, a kind of uh, cl cluster of uh, pain and fear and rage. All of the feelings that we have uh, maybe experienced over the last year. This is the end of the big war in 1918, when the citizens uh, um, uh, have uh, gone to the street to uh, celebrate. So this process uh, of the retrieval of historical findings has not yet uh, ended. We have found many other trenches and other um, things that uh, will uh, 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 held us busy in that work for the next months. So we know that uh, the First World War is a very important uh, cultural route. We speak with marching too about cultural road in the territory and your territory is so important for the history of people and, uh, and also to rediscover the, the traces and the common gods in your hill. Thank you. Now the uh, stage to Ute Bauschert, uh, head of tourism of Bad Wimpfen. Bad Wimpfen is a Chitteslow in Germany uh, about slow tourism ideas. Please welcome Ute. Hello from Germany. I'm Ute Bauschert, head of tourism uh, from the small town of Bad Wimpfen in Germany. I'm going to start my presentation now. Can you see my presentation? Not yet. Not yet? Hmm. Is it now visible? No, no. Mm, you need to start again from Zoom, please. You can see it now. Uh, yes. It's okay. Yep. Oh, Germany, national value. Okay. So, by the presentation mode. Okay. So, Bad Wimpfen is a quite small town um, located in South Germany. This is Germany, you can see here, and we are now in the south um, of Baden-Württemberg, south region of Germany. And we are in northern Baden-Württemberg between Frankfurt and Stuttgart. It's not far away from Heidelberg. Heidelberg is well known internationally. So we are also located in green area. It's a Neckar River Valley we are located. And we have a very rich historical um, culture. We are very famous for our Kaiserpfalz. You can see here the Staufen Kaiserpfalz emperors when they traveled along Germany to south of Italy in the medievals, they often stayed and resided in um, Bad Wimpfen. They very much liked the town. We have different certifications. Um, we are not only Chita Slow town, we are also fair trade town certificated. We are very small. We are only 7,424 people. So it's quite a small town. 
Um, most of them work in the nearby industrial centers of Heilbronn and Neckarsulm. We reflect upon a very long cultural history. As I said before, Staufen Palace, north of, we are the largest Staufen Palace north of the Alps. But our history starts uh, from the Romans. Um, we have Roman traces um, in our town. And therefore, we have, we have very uh, strong medieval time. People were very rich. We had a lot of craftsmen. And uh, we were also free Reichstadt, Freie Reichstadt. Later on, after the Reformation, it got a bit poor, especially after the um, Thirty Year War in 1620. The town started again um, in the last century with being a bath place, and we also have salt water mills. So the spa tradition started. Um, in former times. We are very lucky because, you know, uh, being an old town, it costs a lot of money to renovate all the old buildings. So we are lucky. We are now Lidl, Germany. You probably know in Italy Lidl and also in Poland. Lidl is, uh, they have their German headquarter now in Bad Wimpfen. You see here on the picture, uh, it's a very interesting architecture building. They try to develop it quite green to fit into landscape and nature. And it's not inside the historical town, it's out of the whole historical town, very close. So we are lucky to have uh, this Lidl company here. Um, of course, they have to pay income and um, we get money out of uh, Lidl to invest in our activities. We have a very broad variety of cultural events and festivals. Some of the oldest markets in Germany are held in town. It's a Tal market. For example, it dates back to Anno 965. So it's a very old traditional market. Also, we are known, you see the picture here, for the old German Christmas market. It started in 1487. So we live actually history with locals and also with tourists. Uh, for example, in the Reichstadtfest, Imperial Town Festival, which would have been now, exactly now, we would have had uh, this Reichstadtfest, but of course, um, we had to cancel it this year. So what makes us Chita slow? Uh, we have very many significant historical monuments, as you can see on the pictures. We also have a natural environment. We have uh, also a good correlation between habita inhabitants and visitors. They both join the festivities. We are also audited as family friendly community. So we have many uh, young families in town actually at the moment with little children. We have tradition, art, history, and craft cultivated. We have many societies in clubs like musician clubs, and um, they help us and assist us with activities for tourists also. We have a good social infrastructure. We have caring systems for poor people, elderly people, and families. We are also salt water spa. We have healing waters in our thermal baths. 
The thermal pass uh, was renovated currently and it's going to be reopened soon. But also we have a really nice open water pool. It's actually also um, very old. It's dated from 1920. And during the Second World War, many competitions with swimming competitions took place in Bad Dimpfen. But our focus is on sustainabilities. We have uh, protections of historical sites. Our blue tower is now under big renovation. We have projects like Esbare Stadt, Edible City, which means we have different uh, places in town cultivated by our gardeners. And also visitors and local can go there to harvest like apples, blueberries, strawberry fields, um, also vegetables. We permanently develop the community, the infrastructure. There's a new mobility concept now going on, water resources, so we are, far below the um, 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 water consumption in whole Germany. So our water consumption is quite low because people have their own gardens in town. We have local manufacturing and we do a lot now in city marketing too. Because now many towns in Germany due to Corona really have problems to get in tourists and people. Some of the towns really get a kind of dead and we have to do a lot of activities to revive and preserve our little town. Mm -hmm. So what makes slow, slow tourism in um, Bad Wimpfen, you get a quite nice impressions of our small alleys. We promote like seeing, lingering, diving into the moment. It's a kind of carpe diem concept and offer. You can sit and have a rest in the town. We have a lot of banks, gardens, places where you can relax. We offer now a picnic um, basket in one of our cafes so people can pick up the picnic basket and sit somewhere in town on a bank and just enjoy wine and food. So seize the day is one of our uh, slogans for slow tourism. People find here um, originality and relaxation. We have the romantic alleys. People can walk and change places, can go into and dive into the medieval city can have a look in the Kaiserpfalz, which starts here behind the blue tower. It's far above the Neckar Valley. We have a lot of half timbered small houses. We have small cafes and also we have a lot of um, individual shops, not the big chains. We have small interesting shops with nice craft and food. So what we developed is some slow arrangements. We have a discovery tour. One is guided and you can also go on your own. You get a little uh, brochure and then you can have several stops in town. Also, we develop now a new photo discovery tour because people now with social media, they like to go on tour and make great pictures like here. This is our Jewish house and there's a lot of roses around and people like to have a stop there and take photos on a self-discovered tour. 
So this self-discovering tour in Corona were also possible to undertake. And still in Corona, we had some people here because we have a audio system on a Lausch tour app. So people can download the app and go on, on a tour of their own or make one of these discovery tours. Also new products are in the green area around. We have a new hiking tour um, around Bad Wimpfen. Uh, in Germany now is very popular this Waldbaden, di uh, how it's called, um, um, dive in the forest, mindful walk uh, with a guided tour. It's a stress prevention program and um, we do some exercises in the forest with a trainer and calm and relax. There's a lot of hiking and cycling tours around. It's here now, the Neckar River Valley. And of course, we have the uh, river cruising tours. Uh, it's a very slow and relaxing type of products. So we don't have over-tourism like Heidelberg. Many tourists are in Heidelberg. It's very popular internationally. Um, Bad Wimpfen is a little hidden champion. So we have a good relationship between the locals. Here is artisans uh, working and uh, the tourists go along and talk with locals. It's a good relation between tourism and locals in our town. To get you a better impression, I'm going to show you a film. Elena, ich bin mitten in der Präsentation.
So this was my presentation. Yeah. So <laughs> I'd Thanks. like to invite you to have a look Thanks. personally nice. to Bad Wimpfen. Very nice. Uh, uh, are there any questions? Voucher. Sorry, but Sorry, we but haven't we... time for questions in this webinar <laughs> because it's not a conference, it's a, a limited time, but we are very, very happy to see but the Wimpfen, uh, very often the market uh, has been the generative reason of the city in the world. And normally the, the market is in the heart of the town. And so you are so right to restore, to restore the, the space for market, joining tradition, history, innovation, uh, and also cooperation, you, you say. Very good also and nice, the innovative approach to Cittaslo tourism. Thanks. Uh, to Ute and uh, to Bad Wimpfen. Now we go to China. China, Chitoslo, Yashi in the Gauchun area. Hello. Good afternoon or good evening uh, to Lee Kailing, Kelly, our Kelly, the Secretary of China, Chitoslo Coordinating Committee with the Wang Fan, Mr. Wang Fan Ambassador. Uh, Yashi is the first Chittas Law in China. Uh, it is the town uh, coordinator of the network in China, so important for exactly for the Chittas Law tourism experiences. Please, Kelly. Thank you. Riusciamo a sentire in italiano cosa dice? No. Uh, and today I will share some ideas in bed and breakfast. In recent years, Yashi Sita Slow continues to promote the concept of slow life and uh, constantly explore new development modes of Sita Slow tourism providing more employment ways for young people and presenting the concept of slow life to more tourists. In 2021, the project of tourism plus bed and a breakfast in Yashi Sita Slow has made a new breakthrough, especially in the field of convalescent breakfast and bed. And uh, this is the village uh, called Shi Qiangwei. With the integrant development of urban and rural areas in China, some, some idle houses have appeared in rural areas. From the perspective of local residents in Yashi Sitaslo, we will make effective use of idle houses to develop homestay facilities so as to attract tourists and make consumption, realize the development and the upgrade, upgrading of tourism and increase the income of people and enrich the new forms of agriculture. This approach satisfies people's pursuit of natural life provides tourists with more comfortable and personalized accommodation places, increases the degree of leisure and entertainment and tourism experience, and enables tourists to truly understand and integrate into the local rural living environment and cultural atmosphere, which is the correct response according to the current market demand. The homestay renovation project of Yashi Sita Slow is in full swing. A group of new homestay rehab rehabilitation bases represented by Shi Xiangwei Homestay Village are gradually becoming popular clocking points for rural tourism, infusing new vitality for Sita Slow tourism. In the process of deepening the tourism and the homestay industry of Yashi Sita Slow, we have focused on considering and solving the following problems to share with you. The first one is 
to properly handle the relationship between employment and entrepreneurship. Through the development of bed and breakfast economy, a number of local jobs have been created and many young people have returned to their hometown to find jobs actively participated in bed and breakfast entrepreneurship and contribute their own strengths to the development of their hometown. This not only realizes the doorstep employment, but also avoids the shortage of employment and reserves sufficient talents for the development of citizenship tourism and homestay industries. The second is to deal with the relationship between input and income. Our bed and breakfast will never reduce the cost by reducing the service quality. We strive to achieve a win-win situation for providing tourists with high quality service and increasing the income of local residents. We have carried out catering and the service skills training and compiled some brochures to provide tourists with the most characteristic accommodation experiences of Gauchen so that tourists can feel the intention of bed and breakfast owners and also bring a large number of popularity and orders and constantly improve the income level of local residents. The third one is strike a balance between tradition and modernity. With the use of advanced technology, environmentally friendly materials, local cultures and fashion taste, the unused old house will be transformed in a safe and a stable homestay with warm winter and a cold summer. Living in a repackaged old house, visitors can not only experience the unique traditional culture of Kaohsiung, but also enjoy modern living equipment. Now you can see the village, uh, the environment of village. I have a huge exchange after the uh, uh, in 2021. The fourth one is properly balanced, properly balanced in ecology, ecology and development. We respect nature and advocate the concept of green development. On the basis of maintain, maintaining the origin appearance of the village and its own ecological environment as much as possible, we we'll renovate the houses, courtyard, and villages. We we'll not only protect the environment, save, em, save energy, and reduce emissions but also create landscape nodes, create a bed and a breakfast cultural atmosphere and promote the sustainable development of local tourism. Last, the properly handle the relationship between government and the market. We are actively seeking government support. We'll be part of a homestay facility for rehabilitation homestay facility as at the same time, our rehabilitation homestay, homestay facility should be brought into the government system of uh, sanatorism, have the qualification of reception of the government, the rehabilitation team, solve the problem from Monday to Fridays of season, already let the people understand the slow concept but also increase the income of the homestay facility owner. People's attention to tourism have shifted from the historical connotation of scientific sports and architecture landscape to people's own emotional experience and participation. By building a homestay industry, we provide opportunities for tourists to understand and integrate into the local area, build, bring the relationship between tourists and local residents, enhance the sense of belonging and allow tourists to stay, slow down and enjoy the city slow life. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Very interesting. <laughs> congratulations, Kelly, and congratulations to the network of uh, Chitra Slow China. China. Very interesting, the relationship between the tourists, like uh, uh, local inhabitants. Yes, you have perfectly take the spirit of Chitra Slow. No, tourist is not only a tourist, but it's also a guest of the community. Great yeah. experience, uh, not only in Yashi, but also in uh, all the network uh, in China. Now we go on with the next uh, uh, speech for, by Yuki, Yuki De Emilia, uh, Cittaslo Tourist Project. Uh, Yuki is a councillor of Belluno Cittaslo. Uh, please, Yuki, you are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Buongiorno a tutti. Io ringrazio nuovamente il segretario. I would like to thank again uh, Mr. Olivetti, Mr. Migliorini. Belluno has been present a lot. But I want to talk about my experience during this day. Perfect. For our uh, friends who live um, abroad, Belluno is in the north of Italy, near Vene Venice. It's a, a big town rather than a small city. It's surrounded by green areas. The slogan is a city in the green. A characteristic of our territory is the fact that we are the only territory that within its municipal territory, there are important protected areas such as a national park and a UNESCO heritage like Dolomites. So from the touristic point of view, we have nature, but the particular aspect of Belluno is that we don't have only this. This is what distinguishes us from other Alpine operators. So, but we also have cultural resources in the historical town and the food part that is proper of Belluno. This is a picture to make you understand how much, how many green areas we have. This is the Piave River. From the administration point of view, tourism has always been a synonym for sustainability. We want to propose activities that are sustainable, over time to allow future generations to enjoy the resources that we have at the moment so as not to destroy them. We limit flows, we have to consider this. Belluno is located between two important hotspots from a touristic point of view between the Dolomites and Venice, but it succeeded in maintaining um, the territory in an important way. It is particular because it is logistically comfortable, because it has always been used as a way to discover the surrounding area both for the Dolomites and for the territory to the south of Belluno. At the global level, we tend to uh, spend small um, holidays, short holidays, Belluno was the place of accommodation in order to visit the surrounding areas, at least before the COVID. Speaking about sustainability, we have joined to the European Charter of uh, Sustainable Tourism, 
an initiative of Europark, the Federation of Protected Parks. And to join this charter, we have presented various projects that the administration has brought forward. I want to explain some of them, such as these two logos, which represent a project that we have inaugurated for an event with a low environment impact. We have drafted quality standards that cover all the moments of an organi of organizing event from the communication phase by providing guidelines to the organizers by favoring digital communication without printing any materials or by choosing sustainable inks that have a less lower impact on the environment. There are aspects linked to logistics. We should prefer places or hours that allow people to reach the event through the public transportation means from the um, restoration and restaurants point of view we want to offer local products and last but not least a sustainable management of waste so the idea not only to separate, but also we have to think how to reduce waste at the packaging level. We have prepared these two logos that identify the events. This is something that is useful for marketing because sustainability is a fashion word and attracts people and the organizers can exploit their attention to the environment also for uh, this purpose. There are two logos. The first represents uh, a kind of flower that is of our territory, which is Taraxacum. It is provided to the organizers and they, it's a kind of declaration of intent. From the second year, the administration verifies what has been done. And in addition to a lot of standards and requirements, we increase the difficulties and the choices that must be done by an organization to obtain the proper certification, which is represented by the dandelion, which represents the low impact on the environment. I want to show you a short video made by a series of youngsters during an Erasmus project on the 2030 agenda to implement the goals of the 2030 agenda in which they tell the certific certification of the administration. The city of Belluno is a partner of us because we think it's very important to work at the local level on the global sustainable development goals. With the three students that we have selected, we decided to work on green events. What's a green event? It is an event that is organized following sustainable standards in order to minimize the impact of the so-called ecological footprint. Having an eco-friendly behavior is a must as it is the preservation of the local products and the land values. To do so, every association is encouraged to follow partly or completely the guidelines, starting off with basic actions such as sorting out the waste, 
or promoting the events and rally impact campaigns. How to organize a green event? First step, you need to think in an ecological way. That means that starting from the beginning, you have to make the right choices, that we have the lowest environmental impact. Some examples are advertising the event online and predispose um, recycled napkins and cutlery. How to get the Green Event Certification? There are mainly two steps in order to get the Green Event Certification. First of all, the Green Event Certification is given to all the events that take part for the first time, adopting at least 50% of the measures from the guidelines. Secondly, beginning from the second year of measures adoption, all the events that satisfy more than three quarters of the um, guidelines requirements will obtain the Green Event Gold Certification. In the guidelines, there are different colors that highlight the suggested measures and the compulsory ones. Obviously, in order to get the Green Event Certification, you need to meet all the compulsory measures. Why should we organize a Green Event? A green event is first of all a way to help our planet in this age of ecological crisis, but it is also a remarkable example for the participants since they are directly involved in the promotion of, of the environmental awareness by keeping a sustainable behavior. What's our logo for a green event? When the event obtains one of the two certifications, the local institution provides you the official logo that will be displayed in every public occasion. Our chosen logo is the dandelion flower that is an icon for our mountain area. Its crowds perfectly meet the initiative's exigence because for the green event certification, the image of the flower is yellow. And then for the green event goal certification, the flower is ripened and it gives us an idea of low ecological footprint and lightness. Eccoci. Um, andando avanti con le slides, un altro progetto. We go forward with the slides. Another project that involves young people in these proposals is the one we have implemented with the park within the Belluno of children of young people that is organized according to various topics. On this occasion, we have worked with the schools on how to behave within a protected area, what are the appropriate behaviors to have. And with the children, we have prepared a guide with drawings that is provided to the tourists that come to the info point of the park. So there is the, in the interaction between locals and tourists. The last project involves A sustainable, it is a sustainable project that covers the environmental sustainability because it aims at protecting biodiversity. It is also a project with a social aim because it forces environmental education activities with schools and it promotes the territorial marketing. So we mix the idea of Belluno as a, a city that promotes these products. In the slides, there is the didacted beehive installed in a municipal park. which is connected to the totem on the left. And there are a lot of data included. It has been installed in the city center so that it can raise curiosity also in tourists, not only in the resident. We have become a Chita Slow and we will try to collaborate with this association to develop projects in the touristic sector 
we are focusing on two projects in particular. So what are the next steps? Tourism for organizing a package that involves the Cheetahs laws that are closest to us, namely Asolo and Follina. There are three main components, slow tourism, experience, experiential tourism, which is growing. The tourist is the protagonist, is an active part of the activities. So I am thinking about artisan workshop, for example. And the third part is the wine and food tourism. The last project that we would like to uh, develop is to involve the operators of the city on this, because as Pier Giorgio says, Cittaslo is a community. We have worked a lot so far to make residents understand what are the potentials of the territory. And from them, we expect that they convey the message to the tourists. So this is a kind of territorial market from citizens to tourists. So a different communication. And we will work to enter this showcase to promote our products. I would like to thank you for this opportunity. I'll give you the floor. To you so much, Yuki. Oh, no words. You have explained uh, so good uh, all uh, the project and matter on the table. Belluno is a new member of Cittas Law, but uh, thanks to you, uh, to the mayor, Jacopo Massaro, you are many steps on. So we will have a, a, a new project together. Now we go on with the, the last contribution from, uh, we remain in the Alps in North Italy because Filippo Pighetti, info point of Chiavenna Città Slow. Good morning, hello. Good morning. Hello, uh, he will speak to us about outdoor bike. You know that uh, outdoor is so important uh, issue and element of Città Slow tourism idea and project, uh, of course, uh, uh, also bike, ex specifically, you are uh, speaking now about outdoor bike, bike biking, biking is a fundamental uh, part of the outdoor, but of course, uh, in the Cheetah's Law spirit must be managed with the balance and the sense of the limit. Please, Filippo. Buongiorno, buongiorno a tutti, spero mi sentiate bene. Innanzitutto un, un caro saluto e un ben ritrovati. Morning everybody. Um, my greetings go to the President Mirini and the Secretary Giorgio Olivetti. Last year we have met at the International Assembly. We have spoken about our uh, experience of the um, of 20 years in the trekking sector today we will uh, make a step forward regarding tourism i wanted to uh, greet all of the participants and the speakers because it's uh, good to meet uh, among the cheetahs laws in events like this and um, because we are talking about uh, activities that we are carrying out as uh, part of the Cheetahs Law Network. And I would like to proceed. Uh, I hope that you can see the presentation. First of all, we are in the northern part of Italy, in the region of Lombardia, we have uh, a smaller part of uh, the north Italy between the Lake of Como and uh, the border with Switzerland. We have a uh, region of uh, Bormio, uh, Bormio and uh, uh, Chiavenna Valley. This uh, is a very rich 
area because it was an obliged route in terms of trade and for all of our Alpine passes. And with the advent of the communication lines, it became a peripheral and it has lost trade activities and over the last 20, 30 years, our administ local administration started uh, with um, um, tourist consulting with a planning activity in order to see how to uh, use those uh, Alpine passes, the Spluga pass, and that leads to the Splugen on Kaira Zurich and is a connection with the uh, Middle Europe, uh, the Lake of Como and the rest of Italy. In the framework of this activity, planning activity over the last 20 years, we have at firm and found out the tracking path of the Spluga way, thanks to the 20 years of uh, work it has become the first summer destination of the Kemena Valley with tourists coming from all over the world, basically. So this is a right um, product or one of uh, the tracking path of the Spluga. But in the last 20 years, we have tried also to affirm a new establish a new product that is linked to the cycling at a national level and is more popular, accessible for families and children, people that are less attentive to technical um, performance. And I will present that before uh, the establishment of this new product touristic product in the last 20 years, we have worked a lot for the creation of the facility of the network that today links through the Kevana Valley from the Switzerland border to the flow, um, Kevana Valley Lake of Como then can go on to the Valtellina up to Sondrio and other uh, places, touristic places are, for example, Bormio. We have not, uh, our administration just mm, didn't make only this um, uh, structure facility. We have developed a uh, a network for renting bikes, every main city like Kevenna, Chitaflo has um, arranged a system for renting bikes so that the visitors can reach one of the main destinations of the Kevenna Valley with the a train from Milan, comfortably in train, they can uh, reach also other places, they can rent their bike or e-bike with all of the accessories needed, they can go north or south, they can leave their bike, go back with public transport, because we have a system of um, recovery of bikes. So we have created a uniform sign system along the path. And the next effort was to put on the net uh, to create the path with the uh, economic operators, the many restaurants and 
um, present on the territory. And we have uh, invented the so-called bike gourmet touristic package. So visitors can get to the place, they can rent a bike, they can stop at one point every uh, place has been uh, equipped with uh, the, those um, mm, charging columns and they can make some gourmet experiences offered by uh, restaurants they uh, can access uh, farm houses and that uh, they can uh, make experiences with animals so they can uh, have this gourmet experience they can uh, remain overnight at uh, homestays and then they can follow the next day with their uh, path this is a system uh, of the Sondrio province within 114 kilometers of uh, path. So we have 40 um, uh, we have parking arrest areas with uh, services, uh, toilets uh, and uh, smaller um, boxes with uh, tools in case of need and all of the municipalities the entire mm, cycling network is served by the uh, trail stations with the possibility to take the bike on the train These are the six points to rent a bike with uh, more than 300 bikes for city bikes, e-bikes and bikes for children. We, we really believe in our family friendly uh, target. We have also caps for the children and all of that has um, allowed us to put our city of Chiavenna on in the network in the northern part of the border with um, Switzerland within the path of Valtellina and the cycling path of the Lake of Como. Once this per first uh, product was established, For non professionals, but for families and children, we want to um, promote that so that those families remain for more than one night. We have tried to work uh, over the last years to the establishment of the great biking passes. We have uh, the Spluga Pass of Gavia and Motorola. Uh, where Motorola has a more professional and technical uh, audience or uh, tourists. So we have um, worked at the signs, street signs, and we have tried to uh, create and organize some sport events like the arrival of the Giro d'Italia. to the pass of the Spluga. So uh, the other, the tour of Italy and a tour uh, for uh, under uh, 23 years old um, uh, athletes. This before the COVID crisis, we had people from all over the world coming um, here to visit us. So we have athletes and for those passes, we have also some 
testimonials that helped us, like Ivan Basso, who is a winner of the Tour of Italy, Contador, who is another winner of the Tour of Italy in 2008-2015, Davide Cassani, is uh, uh, then um, in the past was um, uh, a bike athlete, and we also have uh, uh, the event for the athletes um, under 23 years old. So we invite the visitors to train on our uh, paths. In September 2020, after the pandemic, uh, they were uh, selecting some paths to the lake or uh, upwards to train for their uh, tour tours. We have really appreciated the fact that that uh, cycling could be exploited as a tool and a modality to uh, make our Chitoslo be visited and be well known, uh, as well as our natural resources like terraces and the entire province of Sondrio and uh, mm, its products. As I said before, we have created this uh, great uh, biking network. We had a lot of tourists that um, went along those paths but they didn't visit the terraces for example that our territory is rich of indeed. So we have created some ad hoc signs inviting the tourists to go out safely of the main route to enter into those smaller villages, in order to visit uh, them and make new experiences. We uh, invite also to visit the gra uh, graveyards the vineyards and we have also a road that links the basins for the production of energy. So this phenomenon was a request of the market, but in one sense we have uh, uh, promoted that. Once the paths were created and we have created the bike and uh, etc. We have promoted with communication through a parcel with the entire biking offer when you can find a presentation of the territory, the various routes for bikes or paths that go to the rural uh, areas that can be um, uh, looked at also on the app. This uh, is a tool that can be used uh, by international tourists uh, in order to organize uh, one's uh, own vacation. You can find a description of the routes the level of difficulty and uh, the gaps, the difference in altitude. You can also download those uh, uh, routes. You can also plan your vacation, your experience on the website. You, it is uh, also indicated what are the in interesting uh, points like um, uh, workshops of handicraft another product that is rather extreme is the bike park the entire 
Chiavenna Valley and Sondrio region is linked to traditional tourism um, until a uh, few years ago with um, uh, uh, ski uh, wicks uh, and uh, uh, tourism linked to the snow. But precipitations have um, uh, reduced over the years, and this has caused some difficulties for the entire Alpine Arc in order to find an alternative to the traditional tourism. During the summer, we have uh, created um, uh, a made bike park using uh, the uh, lift um, lifting um, systems used by bikers and so mountain rail was used by bikers in order to reach the um, to reach the um, bike parks in this slide, you can see a summary of the data over the last years. In order to show to you the fact that the touristic office uh, is uh, managing the rent uh, bike rent, and you can see the exponential growth that increased with COVID, in, indeed, the number of bikes is never enough because the activity is uh, uh, an excellent activity as a contracting for contracting uh, the COVID crisis for families. And this is um, an outdoor sport. that has reached a large number of children and people that are not even trained uh, so they can they can use bikes at any level uh, and they can have fun and this allows to people to share a contact with nature uh, outdoor and to have various landscapes and sh share experiences on their territory so beside this growth i wanted to show you that bike tourism uh, is able to um, uh, overcome uh, seasonality so we can have longer seasons as said we are uh, working at uh, promotion and communication with uh, a bike magazine. I will uh, tell you the website name and another important product. Um, to go back from where I started, to put Chitas Low at the center of the two uh, out um, passes, we have transformed the um uh, might of the Stuga Pass is uh, deep root in history and we have uh, uh, turned it to a touristic destination and a structure that was uh, created by uh, engineers and the area is close to um, traffic and people can make an experience uh, totally um, safely. So in this COVID crisis uh, era, for us, it was important to start from uh, the um, revitalization um, and of what we uh, gave for the scanter before 
this is what we have done and we will follow with our work. Cittaslo, uh, not occasionally, is the coordinator of the Cittaslo International Outdoor Projects. Uh, uh, your, your project is a pilot project, uh, very enlightening for all of us. And so uh, it, our milestone uh, we, we told at the beginning of our webinar of Cittaslo is to put in value what we have and what uh, we are without possibly uh, destroy by ourselves in, into resilience economy. And then you have, to, have done, just done that. Uh, it's a green infrastructure with services, easy, easy and slow. Congratulations, great. Uh, thanks. This is the, the last uh, uh, preview speeches and now the stage Conclusion. to our president Mauro Migliorini that I thanks personally because he support us uh, in all uh, matter and also during the Cittaslo Academy of this year. Please, uh, Mauro, for the, your conclusion. Thank you. Grazie. Beh, oggi abbiamo parlato. E ci siamo... Today we have spoken about uh, uh, tourism, slow tourism, where sustainability is the new normal where tourism today is fundamental for starting again after the pandemic. We have to start from sustainable and healthy principles. We have to start from small numbers and proximity destinations that can avoid overcrowding places a responsible tourism, which has been a small niche of the global market until some days ago, but today it has the possibility to propose itself as a model of social equity and of environmental sustainability, but also of a good practice for starting again. And today we have seen many simple examples. There are three main concepts and values, meeting, knowing and sharing. And we have to add the attention to local communities, to the local economy, to the reuse of spaces, the rediscover of places and of our history. Cittaslo tourism is based on small numbers that lead to the knowledge and to the respect of the territory and of people. These concepts are desired also by the United Nations, but it is a current practice for decades. It, we always speak about experimental and proximity tourism. So I would like to thank your participation to have accepted it for our invitation and to have shared your projects and experiences that are a, a lot, a, a source of values. So thank you to all. Thank you. Speakers of today, of the today webinar, very, very interesting, thanks. Uh, today is the, the last uh, webinar of the Cittas Law International Academy uh, of this week before the assembly. We have, uh, we will have the assembly, Cittas Law International General Assembly tomorrow morning, Saturday. And so I see you uh, in the next, uh, in the next occasion, for the next occasion and next appointment with the Cittas Law Academy. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Grazie. Arrivederci. See you. Arrivederci. Goodbye.